making it worse. I feel like I'm missing something. Bring in some. <laughs> Good morning, my love. How's it going? It is so sunny here today. Oh, my heart feels just so happy and full. There's just so much bird song. There's blue skies. There's all sorts of creatures out. I saw a duck waddling up our drive yesterday. I saw an adorable little field mouse. I saw a Mr. and Mrs. Pheasant. <laughs> It's all just happening here. The countryside around me is seriously just coming alive. However, having spent a lot of the morning outside, I have to be inside in the caravan this afternoon because it is my daughter's birthday very soon and she's having a little tea party with a couple of friends tomorrow. She's not one for being the centre of a big party, not her thing. And she's definitely a foodie like her mum. <laughs> And so she's asked me for a pretty extensive list of home-baked goods. So that's what I'm going to be starting to prepare for today. I'm going to come along for the ride with me as we attempt to throw a tea party in a caravan. <laughs> Sleeves up, apron on, ready to go. <laughs> I have cakes to bake, party prep, present wrapping, in addition to recording an episode for my podcast and checking in with my clients. But that's why I love my business because it's really quite flexible and I get to free up space when it feels good to for things like laying on a kind of lavish tea party for a small group of girls <laughs> in a caravan. <laughs> you might notice that no, no progress has been made in the painting of the cabinets of course. this handle this is shameful this handle is still just hanging here i've still got the paint swatches you can only barely just see the weird primer that i attempted to apply don't judge me i'll get there but you know we're in a busy time of life right now and quite possibly i shouldn't have started the project because i don't actually have the capacity to finish it right now um but i still really want to do it because we are going to be in here for at least several more months, if not probably maybe even a year, if we're being if we're being realistic. If you ask Kay Van, he'll say, no, 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 we'll be in before Christmas. But I learned a long time ago <laughs> that he's just an eternal optimist when it comes to projects. And I have to kind of triple and add 10% at any timeline that he gives me. So, so I really just want it to feel a little bit more personalised, a little bit more ours. So I still feel very determined to do the project, but that determination hasn't actually <laughs> panned out into being any kind of progress as you can see and just all i've done is all i've succeeded in so far is just come and have a look at it with me it's just making it worse <laughs> temporarily also i was gonna hide this why do we feel the need to do that this is real life this is the dream life for me yes the view out of these windows is epic being in this part of ireland is amazing and the reality is that the door fell off of this cupboard and so some of my daughter's clothes are just exposed there. I might fix that this weekend. We'll see. That's the reality but I, I was tempted to like not show it because it's not aesthetic and I like things to like look lovely but that's part of my reality right now. <laughs> so, so today on the baking agenda so she wanted cucumber and cream cheese. We're doing like an afternoon tea type of thing. Cucumber and cream cheese mini sourdough buns so i'm doing the dough for that i'm going to start the cake i'm going to get the sponge ready and probably decorate it tomorrow just because we don't have 
space in the fridge for a fully decorated cake <laughs> once the icing's on it. I already made flapjacks yesterday. I make flapjacks at least once a week. <laughs> My husband and daughter absolutely love them and rather than buying like sweet treats from the shops, yes they've got sugar in them but there's like three or four ingredients total so it's you know. So I've made miniature flapjacks. Uh, what else did I make yesterday? Oh I also made, she wanted pesto pasta. So I made pesto from scratch and we just had that for dinner and then I kept some leftover doubling up um, so that they've got that tomorrow. So I've already got a bit of a head start but today buns and the sponge cake. I feel like I'm missing something. I'll have to have a look at my list on my phone. Oh yes, sausage rolls. <laughs> and then tomorrow decorating the cake and making scones tomorrow, so miniature scones, so um, they can have them with clotted cream and jam. I'm really looking forward to all this food, I have to say. <laughs> okay, I better get on. Okay, we have to go in the house because, ah, blinding light, because I just realized that I'm gonna need more flour and I'm keeping that now. <laughs> in the house. <laughs> so this house that we don't live in, <laughs> we can't live in. So we're making the dough for these sourdough buns and I thought I may as well actually just double up, um, make a bigger batch, then I can keep half the dough and bake it later in the week. Sourdough, um, after its first ferment and rise, will just keep really quite well in the fridge for several days, so I quite often do that. So in here, I've got, I think I bought a 15 kilogram bag of strong white flour, organic. Um, I even believe it is actually Irish wheat, which is really cool. And then underneath I've got the same size bag of, again, Irish organic porridge oats. Told you about the flapjack habit, right? <laughs> One aspect of homesteading, I guess, is cooking in a little bit more of a sustainable way. At least that's my interpretation of it. And if I can buy things that are produced within this country, that are organic, that's gonna be better for the environment, better for us, and if I can buy them in bulk, then that means less packaging. I mean, it all comes in paper bags, which is really lovely anyway, but less packaging and less trips to the supermarket. That makes me happy. So I ordered from Pax, really impressed with them. I ordered these bulk items, but I also ordered some like rice, obviously that's, not Irish, <laughs> pasta, beans, pulses, those kinds of things, all all organic, all in bulk. A uh, really great company. Um, not an ad, just a fan. So, time to get some more flour, take it back in the caravan. And I got these airtight containers to store them in because, to be honest, storing them in here because it is so dusty and grimy and uninhabited and there's mice, well, it's inhabited by mice. <laughs> The only thing living in here is not ideal, but we don't, we literally don't have anywhere else that we can keep things like this right now. One day I'll have a, a beautiful pantry of some description, but for now, this'll do. Bacon song. Oh, nice. Put my homemade pickled onions in there. Great. There's something about birthdays that makes me so reflective. I bet you can relate to that, especially if you're a parent, right? Celebrating my daughter's 12th birthday seems to kind of mirror where we're at in life as a whole now. In the same way that 12 is that kind of precipice age, no longer really a child and yet not quite a teenager, I feel like she's on the brink of a new life stage in the same way that as a family we're on the brink of so much new goodness in life too. 
we've experienced the most incredible past year. Selling up our house, leaving the UK, traveling Europe full time for six months together, and now arriving here and settling into our new lives in the Irish countryside. It feels like that same kind of precipice, you know, like having been so altered already, that time of travel really changed us. Entering into this new season, new chapter, whole new lives as we put down roots and establish our homestead and learn to become better custodians of our land. So it feels really apt I guess to be celebrating of course celebrating her and the gift that she is to our lives but also just celebrating spring and the fact that we've had several consecutive days of sunshine that have just so fortunately coincided with her birthday weekend it's been like balm to my soul and celebrating the new chapter ahead for us and the promise of even more of life's simple pleasures you know kinship, laughter, nature, and of course, really good food. <laughs> Spring and summer. Yay. And this. Yes. And leaves. Mid leaves. Hashtag teamwork makes a dream work. <laughs> So it's the next morning and I'm back at it. (laughs) This tea party won't bake itself. (laughs) Um, You can see me making scones here. And I actually failed to really film them later with the jam and the cream on them and all of the things. Uh, But something that I just really enjoyed is baking all of these things in this tiny kitchen that might sound like a weird thing to enjoy because it is super challenging it's a very small space we have very minimal equipment although I have been reunited with my KitchenAid stand mixer and as you see that has been an absolute lifeline during this but I actually quite enjoy the challenge and I find it interesting how little equipment we in fact need to put on a pretty decent spread I'd say Um, and it's kind of a fun challenge to find ways to achieve things you saw me there cutting out these scones with a quarter cup measurer rather than an actual cookie cutter so you know we can make do We did it. We pulled it off. Yes. Best part is getting to eat some of the party food too. <laughs> yeah. Hello. What are you doing? What are you doing? What have you been doing up in the field? Um, I have been preparing for the final um, footpath around the last flower bed. Yeah. And I needed to move the chicken fence over a bit. 